Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Outreach Connection. I am Sandy Axton, your host, and we are blessed to have you with us today. But before we begin this morning, I introduce my guest. I would like for you to go with me to Mark 16 and 15. And that verse says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what we want to do here at Outreach Connection show you some opportunities of ministry and some areas that God has used people in some mighty ways. So today, I'm really thrilled to have Stephen Limbauer with us. He is the CEO of Red Cactus, America's Sweet Salsa. If you've never had any, you're going to go out today and buy some and try it out. Mm -hmm. But also, he authored a book called From the Cactus to the Cross. And we're going to talk about this some today and some of the experiences that um, Stephen has gone through. And Steve, it is good to have you today. It's great to be here. It's Very good to be really here. Really good to have you. And so if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about the beginning of this um, red cactus sweet salsa, Absolutely. America sweet salsa. <laughs> Well, you know, I want to play off uh, what you just read in the scripture because we're a business that's here to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And um, when God gave me the vision, which has been 1995, so that's almost 27 years ago. Yeah. I sat on my kitchen table and I was saved at that point and I had been maybe for a year, year and a half and was growing in God. So I was getting to the point where I was having a relationship and I think able to probably hear him a little clear. and. I woke up one morning and I was sitting at my kitchen table and uh, at that time I was uh, an insurance, in insurance. I worked at Blue Cross Insurance Company Okay. and uh, I was sitting there and God says, I want you to start a salsa business. And well, <laughs> our family and my aunt at one time had created a sweet salsa that had run around for years and years and we had it in the family. It was good. Yes. And I'm like, are you talking about our sweet salsa in our family? And he's like, yeah, I want you to market that. And I'm like, well, God. I don't know anything about salsa. I don't know anything about making it. Uh -huh. Never made it. Uh, I don't know how to manufacture. I, I don't know anything about any of this. God, are you sure you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. And it was like, he's like, yes. I'm like, well, if you do, what do you want me to call it? And for some reason, he's like, I want you to call it red cactus. I'm like, right. well, God, there, there's no red cactuses that I know of. <laughs> and um, if you read the book or look at it, Mm -hmm. I end up finding out that every emblem or item on the label has meaning. And of course, red representing the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. he began to put things together. And if you look at the cross or the cactus on here, it's got thorns, which everything has a meaning in it. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, God. I, mm -hmm. And I was a very, very, uh, hear this, very low risk taker. Um, for me to go out and try to do something where there wasn't this steady income that sure. a check comes every week. Mm -hmm. So God really chose to take me completely out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. to do what he wanted. And right. he knew that if he did, he would change my life mm -hmm. and I would begin to walk the life of faith, which as we talk today, you're gonna to hear faith come up a lot. Right. And the other thing that I didn't realize at that time, and, and now we're, uh, we've grown um, into almost 26 states. Awesome. And we've actually shipped product to every state. So somebody mm -hmm. in every state of this country has eaten red cactus. Right. And, you know, when, when I hear, you know, to take the gospel out, mm -hmm. that is what he has done. And if you mm -hmm. look at our jars, the witness right. that we do take out mm -hmm. um, is to be that silent witness. Right. Now, every week we probably get an email or a letter uh, depending mm -hmm. on the person. It seems like the mature crowd sends us uh, letters. Mm -hmm. the, the younger ones, they want to email you and send things such as that, but every mm -hmm. week we get something. And if you look at our jars, you're gonna see three crosses on there, which right. represents to choose Christ. If you look mm -hmm. on the back, you'll see scripture. And if you look mm -hmm. on the top, you'll see Second Chronicles 714, which is wow. uh, if my people are called by my name with home of themselves. So anyway, I think about the scripture you just read and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes in the beginning, we don't realize all what God's doing, but right. if we walk in faith, mm 
Yes. And uh, you know, after 27 years to see where we're at, mm -hmm. just about anybody to look at us would say, oh mm -hmm. my goodness, God mm -hmm. has really moved this little bitty company in little old Quincy, Illinois to go out and compete against all the big companies right. and be a representation. And um, mm -hmm. anyway, that's uh, our stance as a company and that's how God got me started. And mm -hmm. you know, again, it's, it's, he chooses those things, I think, that he knows we need him. Right. But he's faithful. If we faint not, we'll make it with him. And right. he brings us forth. He gives us hope. He guides and he leads us. And mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what he's been able to do with me. And therefore, that's why I wrote the book, so that people can see that it wasn't an overnight process. It right. is a journey. Truly. Of watching God, his faithfulness, and how he moves, how he speaks. And you mm -hmm. know, like the Second Chronicles, if we seek him, we will find him. Yes. And he's there. Yes. And he will guide, he will lead, he will help. Um, so many things. So it's, it's just been mm -hmm. a really mm -hmm. tough walk, but yet a very cool walk to yes. walk hand in hand with what I, you know, the creator of the world, if you will, the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh huh. So you began with the uh, salsa and then you've extended out to some other products. So how did those come about? <laughs> yeah, uh, no real magic on those. We, of course, mm -hmm. our salsa is a sweet salsa, which mm -hmm. is pretty unique that God would use that because oh taste and see the Lord that he is yes, good. And, yes. <laughs> you know, so anybody's got to taste and see, ooh, that's different, that's good. But yeah. the other items I think have came along the way. They they still don't really represent how the salsa is such a, a stronghold for us, but they definitely mm -hmm. fill in the blanks. And um, you know, we saw as we grew, um, we needed more items to be able to sustain and, and grow and, and mm -hmm. do what we needed and to look bigger in front of the eyes of the bigger factories. So the, the cheeses that we have and the buffalo dips and the Thai sauce and the spinach dip and, and so many things really, uh, you know, I, I believe all things are inspired of God, but it yes. wasn't like the salsa in the beginning was such a right. standout. They have just kind of came along. Right, right, that's amazing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, some of your journey in the writing of the book, From the Cactus to the Cross. Absolutely. Well, I, uh, I was told years and years ago by, by my pastor uh, at that time um, to journal. And mm -hmm. thank goodness that I did um, because uh, I would journal just about daily and always journaling, you know, the things that were going on and the things that God was doing and the things that God was speaking. And I would put it in the journal, whether it be my personal life or my personal life along with the business. Um, I'd always keep those in a journal and uh, I would journal the good times and I would also journal those times where uh, you just were countless really that you wanted to quit yeah. and acknowledge you know, the things that went on there. So as I put all that together, I always knew that God wanted me to write a book. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me tell everyone, writing a book is not easy. No, it is. <laughs> and when I got into it, I thought, oh my goodness. And then when I began to write the book, mm -hmm. it got bigger and bigger. Then I was like, oh my goodness, trying to keep track of everything in the book was <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> and, but you know, it was like, but God. Right. And, um, yes. But the book I wrote in a sense of, uh, he had me write the book and tell the story. And much of it is just the tolling that we do to over and over, keep pressing through, keep pressing through. Mm -hmm. um, because life can be tough, you know, life can be right. hard, mm -hmm. and, um, but God is good and he mm -hmm. always gets you through. So much of it is that continual, darn, it didn't go the way I thought, but you keep pressing and God would keep giving you encouragement and he would give you a little bit or he would send a message or he would send somebody, always keeping you going. Right. And I really believe, you know, if you look in the Bible, just about anyone you look at went through years before the promises. And many of them sometimes didn't even get to see the promises they were given, but they still walked through it right. for those that come later. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we're in our 26th year and really just beginning wow. to kind of walk in it. And the whole book kind of tells of that process of just hanging in faith and, and walking it through. And uh, I write in there, of course, as I said, I, I call them God encounters. And I yes. specifically spell that out in the book. God mm -hmm. encounter, here's mm -hmm. what happened. Here's mm -hmm. what happened, you know, mm -hmm. here's what happened. And I mm -hmm. write of miracles and moves and everything else he did to continually guide and lead me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really why, you know, I'm here today, you know, even as a representation for him because he's given me so many encounters. Right. Um, I met a gentleman about a year ago who did a video on us and uh, he read the book first. Mm -hmm. Good guy, um, mm -hmm. 
I think he's a Catholic, and uh, he read the book and he's like, he's like, Steve, I've never had the experiences that you've had, which oh, I'm yes. sure he's had to have a few, but he's like, you have countless experiences. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's really told me that for whatever reason, he's chose mm -hmm. to give me these many experiences and miracles and things that have happened mm -hmm. so that I can go out and relay those to others and show that he's truly alive and well and moving. Mm -hmm. And if we're listening, he is ever present. And um, that's a lot of what I'm doing and to keep people walking in faith and that's what the book is there to do is mm -hmm. to keep people in that faith mode to know that God is faithful to his promises. Yes. If we faint not and we ever seek him out and follow mm -hmm. him and stay in his presence, follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit that he's mm -hmm. always moving. Right. And that's really what is here and um, that's the journey. Yeah. Faith to do God's will. Faith to do God's will. Wow. And then Deuteronomy. 30 and 19, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Exactly. And like I said, uh, for some reason, he gave me a few things out of Deuteronomy. That is one, which mm -hmm. um, if you look on my jars, everyone has three crosses to, mm -hmm. to hold up to that. And then out of Deuteronomy 8, the whole chapter he gave me in the very beginning. And um, he told me that things would go well but there were going to be years of testing and trials. And mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning, I didn't really know what all of that meant. Right. But as I began to walk it out, um, mm -hmm. you know, I learned what it means to count it all joy when you face trials of all kind, because mm -hmm. trials really are there for a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And without them, I don't think we could have faith, because if faith was nothing but good, how would you know what faith is? And, right. uh, I've always heard, you know, the bigger the test, the bigger the testimony. And uh, yes. so I've always walked on that knowing that, okay, God, there has mm -hmm. been so much, mm -hmm. um, not only in the business, just in personal life, but the loss of my first wife at the age of 42. I mean, yes. so many things that have transpired. Uh -huh. But yet God somehow in all of that is working all things together for that eternal glory in Him as a testimony to Him. Right. There's like so much to give people hope. Right. So I really do. I'm like, I do thank God for the trials. I thank Him for the times of the testings and all of those because right. the more I get tested, I'm like, okay, God, that must mean it's going to be bigger, bigger, and bigger. And it's like, I get to go out and give it out. Right. I get to increase and somebody's share. faith to know that He's true and He's yes. real and He's there and He's yes. hope. And mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah. We truly can't have a testimony without the test. You, you can't. I mean, I guess you that's don't. why the test is in the writing right. or the testimony. spelling of testimony. Yes. yes. You know, God's pretty cool. Right. <laughs> can't, is there an, a particular um, story that you can share with us that can tell everybody about that's in your book and the encounter then, yeah. God's encounter well, of course, it? Of course, I do have, um, you know, many, but I do I have know. a favorite one, which... Uh, it was a moment, you know, um, that I could have never dreamt that would happen. And, um, you know, my whole, I, you know, of course the Bible says without faith we can't please Him. Okay, right. so faith is the element of everything. Mm -hmm. It's a substance of things hoped for. I mean, it's... The evidence of things not seen. It, exactly. You see know, it. so it, it's huge in the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. everything about us is based around faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew at some point in life that's probably was going to be how He would use me to speak out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I write in here that God's always speaking, always showing, always guiding. And what He did for me in the very beginning days, and, and I don't remember after a few years, I, um, I was at the gym. I like to work out. Mm -hmm. It was in November, and uh, it, was, uh, it was cold out. But when I went to the gym that night at 6 or 7 in the evening, there was no snow outside. It was just a cold winter day, and I hadn't looked at the weather, so I wasn't going to the gym wondering if it was going to snow or not. I hadn't looked. So anyway, I go to the gym and uh, it's uh, I had a set of steps. You go down and then you're in the gym area. So I mm -hmm. went to the gym and I worked out for a little while. And when I got ready to leave an hour or so later, I was coming back up the steps to come to the corridor before you would go out the door. And I looked outside and I'm looking. Number one, as I'm coming up the steps, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, right. it has been snowing like crazy. There was probably, I'm going to guess, three inches of snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. It had came fast. I would probably call it a a light snow because it mounted up and was just, it was covering everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, there weren't many people moving at that point. It was probably, at that point, it was probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night. So it was dark outside. Again, it was very quiet and the snow was just coming. Mm -hmm. And as I walk up the steps uh, in this little corridor area, probably no bigger than about a 3 by 3 area, 4 by 4 was uh, 
a gentleman. He was uh, a little bit of an older gentleman, very haggard, had haggard clothes, and um, just looked rough, if you will. Uh -huh. And so I walk up the steps, and I was like, goodness, I said, it's a crazy night out there all of a sudden, isn't it? And he's like, yeah. And I said, uh, well, you know, I'm just leaving the gym, getting ready to leave. I'm like, could I give you a ride or something? It's so cold out there. And he's like, no. And Anyway, we began to talk a little bit and just converse. And, um, you know, I um, got to asking him, you know, it's, you know, could I give you a ride later or why? And he was like, no. And then he, he began to ask me questions. And um, he looked at me and he's like, uh, he asked me the first time, he says, do you have faith? And I said, well, yeah. I was like, actually, I do. I mean, because uh -huh. we hadn't talked anything about faith or God at this point. And right. he just out of nowhere says, do you have faith? And I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, I'm an on fire dude for God. I said, I just got saved maybe a year, year and a half ago. And it's like, man, things are going great. I, I love Jesus. And, and then he again, he looks at me. He's like, no, do you have faith? And I said, well, yeah. I was like, you, you heard what I told you. I'm like, I'm, I'm newly born again. And I feel like, you know, I'm pretty excited in the things of God. Right. And on the third time, and you know, in the Bible, three is a big deal. Oh, yes. And many things, okay? Well, mm -hmm. third time he says, no, I want to know, do you have faith? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, yeah. I was like, I'm looking, I'm like, I do. You know, I was like, I, I don't know how else to say it, but I mm -hmm. really do. Right. And he's like, well, he said, someday you're really going to need it. And mm -hmm. at that point, I'm fairly young, and, you know, I've never experienced a lot. I had lost my parents, but... You know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I've not really been tested extreme, if you will. Right. So when he said, right. someday you're really going to need it, I'm like, okay. And he's like, uh, and then he says, well, can I give you a gift? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you want to give me a gift? You know, right. I'm like, he's like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. And he, uh, he had a long, ragged trench coat on. So he opens mm -hmm. this trench coat and he pulls out a metal box. It's just a yeah. little metal box. Yes. And he pops the metal top and he over and he shows me. And inside this metal box were three crosses, mm -hmm. a purple one, a white one, and a red one. And he's mm -hmm. like, I want you to have one of these and I want you to hold on to it forever. Now, remember, this has been now probably 23 years ago, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I reach in and I grab one and this is the cross. And as you can see, it's very small, but... It may be small, but God is big and mighty, oh, yes, and uh, yes. hopefully that can be seen, but you can see it. And uh, so I took it, and um, he's like, again, he reminded me, he's like, I want you to keep that forever, because someday you're going to remember this moment, and you're going to remember mm. that cross, and you're going to go grab it. I'm like, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded. I, I sure. don't realize quite just what is going on, so I'm right. like, okay, I take it. I go on to say, okay, well, it's nasty out. I need to get going. You sure I can't give you a ride? And mm -hmm. he, again, refused a ride. So anyway, we walk through the glass door. And remember, outside, it's really just fresh laden snow. And it's like there's not even footprints in it. It's just clear because it's coming down so heavy. Mm -hmm. So I walk out the door, and I take maybe three steps. He walks out. He goes to the right because I'm going across the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Three steps, I look back, and I'm like, uh, you sure can't give you a ride or something? And he's like, no, we're, we're all good. And I take a couple more steps and I look back over just to glance at him again. He's gone. He's gone. Yes. And I stood there and I'm like, okay, and you got a picture. There's no more doors. Okay. Right. There was nowhere for this person to go. It's huge glass windows mm -hmm. is all that's left. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just was gone. Yes. And I stood there and multiple things. One, I thought, well, no one's going to believe this, number one. <laughs> we didn't have cell phones in, so it was no taking a picture. Mm -hmm. And I stood there and I thought, oh, my goodness. What little I knew of the Bible, I'm like, I think, I think I just entertained an angel. Yes. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, and the other thought that went through me was like, thank goodness I spoke kindly to this gentleman. Thank mm -hmm. goodness I didn't judge him. Thank goodness I offered him help. Thank goodness mm -hmm. I reached out to him. Mm -hmm. You know, thank mm -hmm. goodness that mm -hmm. I wasn't pride or whatever could have said. And, you know, I mean, right. and I went ahead and went home that night and I forever have held onto that cross. And of course, mm -hmm. the cross later in life, 
uh, years and years later. Um, actually, in 2019, when I lost, I'd lost my first wife to, to cancer. Mm -hmm. And I had kids that were being homeschooled, which I had to somehow start figuring things out. And just a number of things that happened. And I, I really, right. the December of 2019, it came to a point where you know, the enemy was just trying to work me over because I just had finished the book and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just, I had a lot of things coming at me and mm -hmm. uh, we were actually trying to be sued a quarter million dollars on a certain issue that later it was just, it was just, it mm -hmm. was a mistake, but it mm -hmm. was real. And I walked out one day and I was ready to just, if you want to say I wanted to, I wanted to quit life. Sure. I mean, I just came to the point, Lord, take me away. It was 630 in the morning and mm -hmm. I felt like nothing was right. And I think, well, how did you get there with everything that you've experienced in God? Well, life can get rough sometimes. It can. And luckily I had a good friend out of nowhere call me that morning at 630, never had done that and prayed and, you know, got me into the right place for the sure. most part. And then mm -hmm. when I got off the phone, God reminded me, he's like, hey, you may remember when I sent an angel to encourage you. Right. It says someday that you're going to need faith. Mm -hmm. Go downstairs, you get that cross out and take a look and remember the promise I gave you because I work mm -hmm. all things together for good to those who love me. That's it. And if you'll hang here in faith with me, I will make meaning of all the things that have happened mm -hmm. and you will go out for my glory. And right. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that, you know, he brought remembrance of the cross to me. Mm -hmm. Again, later I would go through quite a scenario. And at that point, he would have me carry it every day. Yes. Why I didn't before that, I don't know. But I guess the stakes got higher and my own personal life had some challenge. It was mm -hmm. very real. Right. And um, he had me start carrying it daily. And since I carry that daily, it's not so much that cross, it's the remembrance that in faith we can trust him for all things. Yes. That he's a miracle working God, that mm -hmm. he's a God of hope, that he's mm -hmm. a God of promise, and he will see that through. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is believe and not doubt. Right. And you know, the business has just been a piece that he has used because he gave me something I knew not to choose and kind of confound the wise because I thought I was somebody. I'm like, right. God, I got a degree. I got all of these things going. Right. I was Come making on. good money before I went into this. And he chose mm -hmm. to wipe all of that away mm -hmm. to cleanse me, to change me, and to work himself into me in a way that right. he needed to do to get out all the pride, all the stuff, and clean mm -hmm. house so that I could be a usable, molded piece for him. Yes. And, you know, he's. I'm just trying to tell people that he is so real. He is yes, so he faithful. Is. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible would tell you to renew your mind to the things of God. Mm -hmm. Well, he's good. And if you know mm -hmm. his word and you know his promises, they're mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. He's not a God that can lie. Mm -hmm. And he, just like in the business, has slowly brought us to a place where many along the way said, well, if God was so good, why didn't he do it just in a heartbeat? Why is it taking 25, 26 years? I'm like, I don't know. Go back and talk with Joseph and Moses and Noah and all these other guys right. that <laughs> held in there for years and years. Mm-hmm. Go talk yeah. to Abraham, yeah. who in the end, you know, was ready to give up. Right. And but God, mm -hmm. and that's the but way it's God. been with us. And I love it's, but it's, God moments. <laughs> right, but God, and you know, yes. we we're a business that people look at us and they they really do say it must be God. Mm -hmm. And um, in the beginning, the first manufacturer I had, the gentleman. When I went in the salesman, he saw all the stuff, and he's like, "Well, Steve, do you realize?" Um, one, it's going to be an act of God for this mm -hmm. to happen for you. Right. And before that, he's like, you know, you've got you've got crosses you're wanting on the jars. You've got scripture. He's like, that's never going to fly in this industry, Steve. Mm. And he's like, the money you're going to need to develop a product that is so different. Because he's like, if that product was needed, it would already be out there with the big guys. So you're going to have to have and birth a whole market, mm -hmm. which is financially going to cost a lot. And, you know, he, those are the things he told me. So he's like, mm -hmm. he gave me three strikes right out of the gate. And I said, mm -hmm. well, Bruce, I said, if that's what God wants, right. and this is what he wants on there, and yes. this is what he wants me to do, yes. then yeah, it, it will go well, because it will, it will be the will of God. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about it now, 26 years later, um, he's retired from one thing, doing something else, and I've been able to encounter him. Mm -hmm. And he, he looks at me and says, you know what? I remember your words 20 some years ago that you said right. that God was in it. He's like, God really is with you, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying God has used this as a testimony to those yes. who faint not that hang in there. Mm -hmm. They will inherit the promises of God right? because he's not a God that will lie. Mm -hmm. But you might be tested to the core. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's bad because no. if we were talking earlier, you know, the yeah. test is what becomes our testimony. That's right. And as you can see, I might have been through some really hardships, but doggone it, I got joy yeah. and I got him yes. and I can give that to others. So regardless of what anyone's been through, right. he's faithful. Right. He is faithful. That's the journey. That is it. Wow. So we, uh, we're coming to the end of the program, unfortunately, because <laughs> this has been really good. But if you don't mind, Stephen, would you pray for our listening audience today? Absolutely. Well, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment, thank Lord. You, there Jesus. is uh, no coincidences in you, Lord God. There, uh, your timing is everything. And today, Lord, you have brought us together, Lord, to witness of you and your faithfulness and tell, Lord, your people that you are faithful, God. That, Lord, you would just have us to walk in faith because without faith, Lord, we can't please you. But, Lord, we know that you are a God that, that meets all of your promises, Lord God, that you're a God that can't lie. So, Lord, our word today would go out to the listeners and anyone that's hearing this to know that no matter mm -hmm. what you're facing, whether it's, it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, I, I don't care what it is that we serve a big God. He's the creator of the universe. And that if we will grab a hold of him, if we will seek after him, that he is loving and gentle and kind. And by his Holy Spirit, he will guide and lead you and bring you into a place that is good. He wants us to be in a good place that prospers us. And Lord, we know that prospering is not just financially, but it's spiritually. And Lord, it's everything within our being, Lord. So we just pray today and I ask that you would move upon anyone that's heard this testimony today, Lord, to know that you are faithful and you're true. Lord, we are here to make you famous, Lord God, because you are it. Yes. And Lord, I pray today that salvation would ring true in every listener's ear. And if you know not of him, to just ask Jesus today to come into your heart and say, mm -hmm. Lord, I want to know you, Lord. Yes. I want to know your ways and your promises Thank and everything you, that you're about. Lord, because I hear from from me speaking it today that there, that you are true to your promises, Lord God. So we just thank you that in faith we can move and in faith, Lord God, we can conquer all things because that day on the cross, Lord, when you conquered death and the pit of hell, that all your promises were true and that now with Jesus in our life, we operate from a place of victory, that it is already done and in faith we can claim that. And I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So make sure you run to the grocery store and pick up some sweet salsa, red cactus, America's sweet salsa. Amen. And you can look for his book on Amazon, mm -hmm. too, and make sure you pick up a copy of that. Stephen, it's been good to have you today, and I thank it's you for sharing here. with us, and it's been great to just have you here. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. Lord bless. And so... Look for us again. Lord bless you all. Thanks for being with us. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.